Be humble. Be kind. Be compassionate. Hello and welcome to my quote review series. I'm Dr. Michaela and today I want to talk with you about how to give respectful yet constructive quote review feedback. So as I said at the beginning, I think it's very important that we start from a place of compassion, that we are humble, that we are kind. So the first thing that you should really prepare is your mindset when you're doing code reviews. It doesn't matter if you are the code reviewer or the code author. It's always good to reflect, take a step back and think, well, I don't know everything and the other person might be right as well. So try to allow other perspectives. There are 10 tips that I want to give you, especially about how to write the code review feedback. And so let's start with tip number one, ask questions. Yeah, you probably heard that one, but it's a really, really important one. Why do we ask questions instead of making demands? Well, because a question opens up a dialogue. So the other person can actually, you know, communicate with us. Like instead of saying, rename the variable to user ID, that's a demand. If you say instead, what about renaming the variable user ID? The other person can say, oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe we should call it customer ID. And so you're actually opening up a dialogue. And especially if code review feedback is a little bit more tricky than the example that I gave, asking question is really, really powerful. Another really powerful thing is to make it about the code. So your feedback should be about the code. Try not to reflect on the coder, on the code review author. For example, if you see something and you think, well, you didn't close the socket connection, then you make it about the person. And if you're addressing the person directly, that leads to justifications, rejections, and defensive behavior. But you can make it about the code. So instead of saying, you didn't close the socket connection, you could say, this code doesn't close the socket connection. That's a very neutral and objective statement. Tip number three, indicate that the feedback comes from you. It's your perspective. Indicate that it's your perspective. While you should not talk about the person, right? And say, you did this and that, you can and you should talk about yourself. So this, first and foremost, it signals that the feedback isn't a universal statement and it's not true for everything. And it's not a generalization, but it's an observation from you. For example, instead of saying, this code is hard to understand, you could say, I have a hard time understanding that code or this code is hard to understand for me. So this means that, you know, it's not for the whole world and you don't have to argue that, well, I understand the code, right? The, the, the code author could say, I understand the code. So it, this invalidates your statement, but if it's about you, then it's always a truthful statement and it doesn't affect the other person that much. So you again can have a dialogue about, well, why are you not understanding the code? What can I make better? What can I improve to make it easier for you to understand the code? Well, another tip is no sarcasm. And that's really important. Sarcasm is super hard to detect in written language. There are several studies. Uh, if you want to look them up, I will link them below. But sarcasm, even if you think this is a very sarcastic statement, everybody will be able to understand that this is sarcasm. It doesn't have any place in feedback code review feedback or any other feedback that you're giving. Another thing that you can do is remove condescending words. And there are so many and we naturally use them and I'm guilty of that too, but try to be conscious about using them and removing them. Which words am I talking about? I talk about just, easy, obviously, only. So this can come across very belittling and condescending and it's a good practice to remove the word. If you try out, you will see that they are not adding anything. So for example, you could say, why didn't you just write the CSS in a separate file? Well, that sounds very condescending, especially if you read the line. Well, when I'm saying it, you're already you know, getting some, some clues from my facial expression, from my body language. But if you only read the line, it's really hard to not get offended by it, right? So why didn't you just write the CSS in a separate file? So it sounds daunting. Now, if you remove the just, it becomes, why didn't you write the CSS in a separate file? I would say and argue, especially if you read the sentence, it's still a little bit taunting. So why are we not interpreting the message as a sincere curiosity? Why are we not interpreting the message as this person really doesn't understand or wants to know why we are writing the CSS here, not in a separate file? 
Well, there are studies that show that we err on the side of the negative interpretation for written language. So whenever we see a statement, we err on the side of interpreting it in a negative way. So it's more that we think, well, this just or this why didn't you is a little bit judgmental and actually it means you should have. So what can you do about it? Tip number six, and it's using emojis. Emojis were created to help us give some clues on how to interpret a message. So even though you think emojis might be childish or unprofessional, they have a reason and they are quite good in code review feedback. So for example, imagine the, the previous sentence, why didn't you write the CSS in a separate file? And then you have this questioning smiley. In an instant, it becomes clearer that you're actually coming from a a sincere curiosity that you're really wondering why is that happening because you're wondering and you know it's not your facial clue because they don't see you but it's this emoji that somehow transforms this message and helps to decipher and interpret the receiver what you actually meant the same happens with happy smileys right so if you're giving some feedback and you put a happy smiley there this will help the receiver understand that you're coming from a good place tip number seven is give reason. Yes, you provide reasons for what you're suggesting. So if you're suggesting a change, it's good to explain why you're suggesting this change. You don't have to do it always. If you think, well, clearly, you know, the person understands what's going on here. For example, let's think back about our socket connection. This code closes the socket connection. That's what I said. But why? Why is that a bad thing? So you could then add this means that you're leaking a file descriptor. And if the socket is already bound to an address, then this means that no others can bind to that same address. And that creates a problem, right? And then if you say that reason others, it's again opening a dialect. They can say, well, I don't think so. Or, oh, I did this over there to, to circumvent it. Or they say, thank you, thank you. I didn't know about that, right? And even if they knew about it, it's okay to just, you know, say what are the reasons. Tip number eight is provide guidance. So now let's go back to this socket connection example. So what can you say? You could say, well, use the close method. Explanation and guidance are especially needed for a little bit more vague feedback. So for example, if we recall when I said, this code is hard to understand for me. This is very vague. What, what's constructive about that? Well, it just remarks that something is wrong, but it doesn't give an explanation why, and it doesn't give a guidance how the person can improve it. So especially feedback in that area, or for example, I don't think your code is performant enough. Well, the reasons and the guidance, what should the person do about it? And it's not the author's responsibility to change the code completely or come up with a complete solution, but you can sketch it out. So for example, when I say, I don't understand that code, I could say, I suggest, or I expect that more expressive variable names will make it easier for me. What about naming this variable, this and that, right? Or about the performance of the code, you could say, oh, for example, I, I think this code isn't performant enough. What about initializing the variable outside of the loop? Something like that. So this brings me to tip number nine is how can I add value? And this is really, really important, especially if you think about guidance and explanation. So you have to think about whom are you giving this feedback to? Is it a colleague, a friend? Is it a new hire? Is it a junior dev? Is it an experienced person? Are they in a very vulnerable position? Will they know that? Do I think that they actually know that? And how can I add value for them? And this will change then how much explanation, how much guidance you give. It also will change a little bit the tone. Another thing that you should reflect on when you think about how can I add the most value is, for example, do I have, when I see there are many spelling mistakes, do I have to go through each of those and, you know, write, oh, over there, something wrong, over there, something wrong, and this is spelled wrongly? Or could I help the person more by offering them to help them install a spell checker or just point them to the spell checker, right? Can I point them to spell checker? Look, that's the plugin that I use because I saw you have a lot of spelling mistakes. And then first of all, you don't have to go through each of them and you have provided them with much more value than going and marking each of the, the problems. So this brings me to the last tip, tip number 10, and that's always assume miscommunication over malice. So don't assume that the person did something intentionally wrong. As I said before, there's a lot of research that shows that written language is 
particularly tricky. You don't have the clues, you don't have the facial expressions, you don't have the body language. And it's just really hard for people to interpret the message correctly. So assuming that people had good intentions and the real meaning couldn't be conveyed correctly with this sentence or with this paragraph, it's always a good idea. So first go, get a step back if you feel it, it's harsh, if you feel attacked and think, is that actually true or am I interpreting that? And then try to see it from the positive side, knowing that you have a bias for a negative interpretation. So I hope you liked those 10 tips. I give you a short summary. So ask questions, do not make demands. Make it about the code, not the coder. Indicate that it's your opinion, your perspective. No sarcasm at all. Remove condescending words like just, easy, obviously. Use emojis, yes, you can. Provide reasons, provide guidance. Ask yourself, how can I actually really add value? and always assume miscommunication over malice. So I hope you like this first episode of my Code Review series and um, you can subscribe to my channel below, leave some comments and find me on Twitter, find me everywhere. Yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you, I hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye. Did you know that I write a Code Review book? You can become one of my early readers and get access to my draft chapters and bonus material. Go to michaelagreiler.com book.